Wilder loses to Parker. Is that when you stepped in? Yes, that when I step in. When Anthony Joshua is set to fight Francis Ngannou. We have a lot to look forward to here. There's going to be a press conference this weekend, January 15th. Come check back in. Without any further ado, let's jump into the clips. Uh, was it a hard deal to put together? No, absolutely not. The easier deal. Really? E easier than Tyson? Yeah. Easiest. We wrote a red carpet. So this time around, didn't even have to because they did a great, amazing job last time, even though he wasn't bound in the contract. So a lot of things was just like smooth and moving up like, like this. Okay, so I love Francis's comments here about it was a really easy fight to get done, much easier than the Tyson Fury fight. Uh, it's a good point that Francis makes here that they had previously done so many discussions and negotiations for the Fury fight, and he just didn't care about a lot of the stipulation, whose flag, what are the you know dimensions of this and that. So I love to see a guy who just gets in there and fights. I might not be good yet, but I can do this. You know, all this question that... Uh, you had during the other training camp. Oh man, would I be able to do this? Can I go 10 round? Can I this? I know I can do and I can even push for more. I'm really happy for Francis and I'm thankful as a fan too that we have someone like this at the top who's who's trying to kill these fighters. This was like an opportunity. I was waiting for Fury, but this was the opportunity that I was happy to take. I asked for you know, and at the end of the day, this won't take anything from the uh, Fury rematch. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Francis also makes some good points here about he knows so much more now than he did on his first fight. There's less unanswered questions, which I think bodes well for him in the second fight. He's going to be a lot more confident in there. No, no, he has never been right away. Okay. I think there's even a, there's even a slight chance that the right away is the using rematch. Oh, because I so I didn't do the best at cutting this clip here. But what Francis is talking about is that even after Fury's next fight with Usyk, it's very possible that he has a quick rematch with Usyk based on the outcome of that fight before entertaining a possible Francis and Ganu fight. Um, either way, I remain excited. Uh, when Wilder Anthony Joshua fell out, I was pretty bummed, but I didn't consider that someone like Francis could step in and. I think Francis is even a more formidable opponent for Joshua just based on his size, his strength, um, Deontay. It's going to be harder for Anthony Joshua to anticipate what Francis is going to do because he's not as classically trained of a boxer, which I think bodes well for Francis as well. Francis Ngannou against Anthony Joshua is one of the biggest fights in the history of the sport. And I promise you this, respect to Francis. Easy work for my man. And I know, I know, Ariel, I know you're getting a little bit high right now. I know the MMA world are just walking in the clouds, but we'll bring it straight back down to reality. And Eddie Hearn is such a good promoter, but honestly, after watching Joshua lose to Ruiz and hearing everything that Eddie Hearn said in the lead up to those fights, um, I just don't believe him anymore. I just don't believe it. What do you, what do you guys think? Do you believe him when he talks like this? Well, he looked amazing. Look amazing. I mean, respect to him. Congratulations to him. Um, he was doing his job properly. His speed was there. Everything. He was sharp, very sharp. But I did, on the other hand, I think there wasn't a response in front of him. One of my favorite things that these fighters can do is really give an accurate and honest assessment of their opponent. So when they say things like, oh, they're trash, they suck, they're not going to look anything compared to me. If that turns out to be true, that's great. But so often these are tough battles and I, it just means a lot to me when they show upfront respect and he doesn't think it's gonna be, you know, an easy fight, which of course he's the underdog here. So we wouldn't expect such, but I just really feel like he has an honest assessment on his opponent. And I think that's gonna bode well for him as well. You know, we heard commentary from Joshua and Eddie Hearn before the, last fight for Nganu that they thought he was a joke and um, you know Joshua would never be interested in fighting someone like this he's not interested in the gimmicks I think he used gimmick uh, specifically so who's the gimmick now? I think I will have a better response in front of him that will put him not in such comfortable situation but yeah Nganu goes on to say that uh, he's going to be a much better test than the last guy that I think it was Wallen that Joshua just beat 
And I agree. I mean, no one in the world hits harder than Francis. He looks so spectacular in his first boxing match against Tyson Fury. I think we all have a lot to be interested in for this upcoming fight. And hopefully he surprises some more people. I win this fight, I'm fighting Fury, period. Whether or not he has the bird. Okay, I like where Nganu says that regardless of what happens next, uh, Fury will be his next fight. We all want to see that. Um, I don't know if he beats Fury, but if Nganu lands correctly on anybody, then it's, it's good. This one just happened to be an opportunity, and I was ready for the opportunity. I won. I slide in, you know. <laughs> Nganu lands that punch that he landed in the third round. I don't know if AJ gets off the mat. Oh, Ariel. You're Yes, Ar Ariel makes such a good point here, and this is what I, I'm i in the same school of thought here as well. Joshua does not have a chin. I mean, Anthony Ruiz wobbled him a few times. It's just going to take Nganu once, and I, I just don't think Joshua has the chin. In my opinion, he could have even stood up quicker in the Andy Ruiz fight, but he kind of let his heart fall out of it, and he just seems like an emotional guy to me. Um, I've watched a lot of his stuff. A lot of interviews and stuff and there's an instability in his emotions it's hard to even say exactly do you have you guys noticed anything like this am i off base here there was some talk of like a mixed rules fight with uh, you and deontay wilder was that ever real yes he was real you know based on the outcome of the last deontay wilder boxing match where he lost i think it's comical to think he could have had any kind of chance against francis in an mma fight let's not forget that uh, take away the hands for a second, the boxing prowess. I mean, of course, they both hit very hard, but Francis has to cut weight to get down to 265. He is so thick and strong. And Deontay struggles to get above 215 pounds. So that doesn't even consider all the grappling, the kicks, all the stuff that Deontay has no capacity to handle at all. But, you know, I love the confidence in these fighters where they think they can just jump to another sport and compete at the top of the division. Not everyone's Francis. I think most likely um, knock him Anthony Joshua out. I think he's, he's easier to go to go down than uh, Fury. And, and Ganu correctly assesses it here that Joshua's chin is not like Fury's and he's also going to be slower to get up. I mean, we saw Tyson Fury get up like he was ri risen from the dead. I'm also very excited to see what happens in the Fury Usyk fight. I think Fury's too big of a man for Usyk, but Usyk is so skilled. And if that, if Usyk does come out on top for that fight, I'm gonna lose my mind. I don't even, I won't even know what to do. Thank you guys so much for staying tuned in this long. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe so you can get my newest content. And I'll catch you on the next one.